Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the subroutines in 8085 microprocessor and the instructions associated with it. So first, what is a subroutine? So it is like a function which is a small program written separately from the main program and it performs a particular task and which is required repeatedly inside the main program. Then this subroutine is stored in a different memory location which is different than the main program. Then this is one example where I have shown where the memory, I mean the main program is stored in this, you know, memory location starting from 2000 to 205FH. And inside this main program, we need to call the subroutine Okay, so here we will need the instruction call and if we are calling the subroutine then the subroutine is executed which is stored in this memory location and once the subroutine is executed then the control goes back to the main program. Now what are the advantages of using a subroutine? So the first advantage is it avoids the repetition of instructions and the second is that it gives an aspect of modular programming to the entire program and the third thing is it improves the efficiency by reducing the size of the memory needed to store the program. And then what are the instruction that is used to deal with the subroutines? So there are two instruction first uh, is the call instruction which is used to redirect the program execution to the subroutine and then the next instruction is the return instruction or RTE instruction which is used to return the execution to the main program or the calling routine. Now we will discuss the instruction in detail. So the first instruction is call instruction. The syntax of this instruction is call and then in the operand you have to mention one 16 bit address where your subroutine is stored. The length of this instruction is 3 byte and the number of machine cycles required is 5. The addressing mode is immediate addressing mode or it can also be registered indirect addressing mode. Now let us see how this instruction works. So first the microprocessor, uh, I mean microprocessor reads the address from the operand and then stores this address in the WZ register pair. So let us take an example. So here suppose in your main program or in your calling routine at location 2000 you are calling the subroutine okay and the address of the subroutine is 4000 so the first the microprocessor reads this address okay then this address is copied to the wz register pair then after that the address of the program counter uh, I'm sorry the content of the program counter which contains the address of the next location next location of the instruction in the main program is pushed into the stack that means here the next address is 2003 which is stored in the program counter is copied in the stack. So the higher byte is copied the higher memory location and the lower byte of the program counter is copied to the lower memory location in the stack and the stack pointer is updated and it points to the top of, top of the stack. Now next what happens now the program counter is loaded with the 16 bit address from the WZ register pair supplied by the call instruction. So here the WZ register pair contains 4000 it is copied to the program counter. So what does it signifies? So it signifies that the next instruction will copy it from the address 4000 that means it will uh, like fetch the instruction from the subroutine. Now let us discuss the next instruction that is RTE instruction or the return instruction. The syntax is simple RTE length of this instruction is 1 byte and the number of machine cycles required is 3. The addressing mode is register indirect addressing mode. Here. Let's take an example and see how this instruction works. So first the address is retrieved from the top of the stack and the stack pointer is incremented by 2. Okay. So here the top of the stack contains the next address 
uh, in the main program so it is 2003 so it is fetched and it is copied into the program counter now what does it signifies it signifies that the next instruction will be fetched from location 2003 which is a part of the main program okay now let me tell you one interesting fact about this two instruction so it is the call instruction should be used inside the main program or the calling routine whereas the return instruction is used inside the you know subroutine now how to pass the data to a subroutine so there are two ways the first way is the data can be passed through register so here the data is stored in one of the register by the calling program and later on the subroutine uses the register to get the value and the second way is to uh, get the data from the memory location so first what happens the calling program stores the data in the in a specified memory location and then the subroutine retrieves the data from that location and uses it now while using the subroutine there some there are some cautions that to be that is to be followed so generally while using the call instruction we push the next instructions address into the stack okay so we should be very careful while initialize the stack pointer before the call instruction generally we know that the stack can be initialized anywhere in the user memory map but in a general practice while using a subroutine you know the stack is initialized at the higher user memory location that is f f f f h it is um, this practice is followed such that there will be less likely um, there will be less likely to interfere with a program you know then while using return instruction uh, we are fetching the next instructions address instructions address from the stack so in your subroutine if you are modifying the content of the stack then you should modify it very carefully such that you won't lose the returning address isn't it so generally it is advised that don't modify the stack pointer inside the subroutine until and unless it is required now there are certain cautions that is to be followed while using the push and pop instructions inside the subroutine so the first one is there should be equal number of pop and push instructions so if there are um, the number of push and pop instructions are not equal then what will happen the return statement or the return instruction will pick up the wrong information or the wrong address from the top of the stack and the program will certainly fail and it is not advisable to place push or pop inside a loop because we know that while using push and pop the stack content is modified isn't it so in case you are using push and pop instruction inside a loop be very very careful and with this we are coming to end of this uh, video thank you for watching it in case you have any doubt you can ask it in the comment section and for more updates please subscribe the channel.